Hello everyone, welcome to the TriStar Gym channel. This episode is a side control escape episode. Now I've done a side control escape video before. What we're gonna be seeing in this video is a variation of that, a more powerful variation. And uh, it's for a different situation, a slightly different situation. Now both these escapes go very, very well together. They are very similar. And um, we're gonna be talking about a few key points of how to make this escape work easily for you. Whenever you get stuck on the bottom, you better have a really strong plan, not only to escape, but to escape to escape with relative ease, okay? So here's what I don't want. Here's the absolute worst scenario. Look at this, the man on the bottom here has allowed me chest to chest connection, okay? So you don't wanna allow a guy on top of you to get his chest connected to yours. I always need a buffer between my chest and his. Without a buffer, it's gonna be very difficult for me to reestablish uh, re guard without spending a lot of energy. Now, another problem in this scenario is I've established cross face shoulder pressure on the man on the bottom. Now, the man on the bottom here, if he allows me to control his jaw with my shoulder, he's gonna have a hard time moving his hips, okay? So whenever your, your head is pinned in this fashion here, it is very hard. Try to hip escape in this position here. It's gonna be very difficult, okay? You're not gonna have a lot of a good movement. Now the other problem with this picture here, the man on the bottom has allowed me to split his arms. You see his hands are not connected to one another. Now when your hands are not connected to one another and your arms are split, I can arm bar either arm, I can uh, use my legs to, uh, to, uh, to choke you. I could also choke you with your own arm. I mean there's just a never ending amount of different attacks you can do whenever you split your opponent's arm, okay? So the man on the bottom has to avoid these three issues. One, don't allow the chest to be connected. Two, never allow the guy to pin your head. And three, never allow the man on top to disconnect your arms. If you are aware of these three key factors, escaping from side control on the bottom is gonna be quite simple, okay? And you'll be able to do it with relative uh, uh, you know, energy. You, know, you won't need to spend so much energy trying to escape. Now, here's exactly what I'm talking about in the first video. I'll keep a link to this video. This is the first side control escape. I'll keep it in the in the description. You guys can watch the first one. It has a lot of nice details. Look what I'm doing here. I'm avoiding all those problems. One, my hands are connected to one another. If you were trying to armbar this arm, for instance, this hand over here would come to the rescue, and the hands just protect each other from your the man on top submissions. The other thing is my hands will either go to one side of my face or on either side of my face, okay? So to protect my jaw from your shoulder pressure. You know, this makes a big difference. Having a little bit of buffer makes a big difference. And now the other the other key factor is, because my forearms are connected to one another here, you see this? It allows a buffer be between my chest and yours. And that buffer is huge. It allows me to hip escape. Now, if this is not clear, it will be in a second because I'm gonna be going on the bottom here and, and giving you guys a small demonstration. Here it is. This is what I wanna, this is the position I wanna go to as soon as I feel my guard is being passed. I don't wanna wait too long to get to this position. If you take too long to start escaping from side control, you're gonna have to work extra hard and spend a lot of energy to regain this, this basic position. So this is what we call the prayer position. Your hands are in prayer position. As you could see here, my opponent here, look at how much space I've created between my chest and his. Okay, this is the buffer zone. I've created a nice buffer zone. This is gonna allow me space for me to escape my hips, and notice the shoulder pressure. His shoulder no longer has contact with my jaw, and of course, my hands are tied together, protecting one another. This is the three most important uh, concepts you have to understand when you're trying to escape the bottom. So in the first video, I showed you prayer position. In this second video, I'm gonna be showing you a frame escape, which is slightly more powerful. But to do the frame escape, it's all a question of range, okay? But before we talk about range, let's see again uh, the, the the prayer position. Look, here's my partner putting all his weight on my on my prayer position, uh, on, my, on my arms in prayer position. You'll see that I'm able to hip escape. Watch this again. Look, he could put all his weight on me. I'm still able to get this hip escape. Why? Because he's not connected directly to my chest and my head is free. Okay, I gotta make sure that my head is always free. And this is just demonstrating that the prayer position can withstand all his weight. Now, of course, here's the second and more powerful frame. Uh, uh, escape, which I call the frame escape. Notice how I have my hands over my head and I'm creating a triangle, watch here, with my arms and neck. Okay, so watch here, my arms and neck here are creating a triangle. All the weight is pressed right into my shoulders, okay, as opposed to my chest. Now the buffer area where we're talking about is, is greater in the frame escape than the prayer position escape and that's why it's more powerful. So if you can get to this position here that you're looking at on your screen and, and uh, establish this position before your partner can get to side control, and start applying pressure, your escape will be easy. Not only will your escape be easy, 
but you will attack the man on top. Okay, this is a very powerful attacking position. So here we see my partner's doing some push-ups here and trying to show you that my, my, my frame is extremely sturdy here. I could hold him here for days. You know, this is a very important concept. Whenever the man on top of me, uh, whenever my opponents get on top of me, I want to be able to get in the position that's the, that does not fatigue me. Now, here's my partner doing push-ups. This doesn't fatigue me in the least. I can hold this for literally for hours. You know, if I was stuck on there for a long, long time, I would not feel any fatigue. Here's the prayer position. I'm giving you guys a nice little sharp contrast. You see how I popped my hips? I used my frame here. Look at this. I'm going to pop my hips from, from prayer position. Okay, once I pop my hips, it's going to take more energy than it would if I had the frame. So prayer position is when your opponent got closer to you than you'd like. Okay, it's the backup plan to the frame. Now watch here. I'm going to go jump right into armbar. If you want the armbar details, please check the first video. It's in the link. I slide my right knee in. I throw my leg over. And here I start to go for armbar. Now whenever I do this armbar, sometimes it's really slippery. And as you can see here, sometimes there's a little space between my knee and his neck. Now ideally, I'd want to remove the space completely. But sometimes it does happen and guys slide out their arm. Now this, this armbar, I don't always get it, but I get guys pulling away from me. I get guys running from me. And that's what I want. I want them to retract their weight from on top of me. It's very important that I don't push their weight off me, but I force them to retract themselves. It's either get armbarred or pull back. Now, when he does pull back, I'm not going to let him off the hook. Watch what I'm going to do. As he pulls his arm out here, I'm going to switch right into a triangle. Okay, so you see I shift right into a triangle. I invert my triangle, close it. Again, for details on the triangle, please check the first video. And here, I usually establish a kimura on the near arm. Now, sometimes in the, in, in the first video, I showed the kimura on the near arm. Sometimes guys lock their hands together. So you see the man on top is going to lock his hands together. He's going to protect his arm from the kimura. There's the Kimura. Okay, I'm not going to show the Kimura again in this video. Let's see what I'm going to do next. Watch here. Frame escape. It's a lot easier to escape your hips from this position. I've caught him early. He has not closed the distance on me. I've created a sturdy frame by putting my hands on top of my head. And now watch. I'm going to escape. Go to the arm bar. We're going to see some details on uh, what to do when somebody uh, defends against the Kimura. Here go my legs. One leg under the arm. One leg over. I start to armbar him. There's a space behind my knee. He pulls his arm out, which is very typical. Slide right into a triangle. Now, when you get this triangle, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to hip escape. I'm going to grab his hip, get on my elbow. Look at that hip escape. I'm going to grab his near ankle and watch. I'm going to roll him over. This is one of my favorite moves. I will get on top and now I'm going to finish the Kimura. Watch. Grab the Kimura. His hands are split because of the triangle. He can't defend his arm. And here it is. Okay, so here's the the frame escape, watch this, my hands are over my head, the palms of my hands are over my head. Look at this immense buffer here, look at all this space I have here. This guy has not established a powerful side control. Like we talked about earlier, my jaw is very well protected, and my hips have, because my jaw is very well protected, my hips have a tremendous amount of freedom here. I'm gonna be able to escape very easily. There's not gonna be a lot of weight on me here. He could put all the weight he can, he could be as strong as he wants to be. I'm gonna get to my arm bar. When I get to my armbar, I'm either going to tap him with the armbar or flow right into triangle. So watch here. I also have another armbar here for the guys who like reverse armbar. There it is. If he pulls out of one, either one of these armbars, I'm bridging on my shoulder, climbing on his neck with my legs. And here I close that inverted triangle. Now watch here. I'm going to forego the Kimura details completely in this video. I already did in the earlier video. Please see those details. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to reach with my left hand. I'm going to grab the far hip. So this hand here is going to go connect to the far hip. I'm going to prop on my elbow. I'm going to hip escape. Now, once you prop on your elbow and you hip escape, it starts to get real easy. There's only one more step here. Watch, I'm going to grab that ankle. I don't know if you guys saw that here. Look how I grab his ankle. I'm grabbing a little bit high on the shin bone here. I prefer grabbing at the ankle here. You guys should just be a little more precise than I was in this video. I got a little lazy here. Grab that ankle. And now what I'm going to do is because his hips are up in the air, I'm going to be able to topple him over. Okay, I'm going to pull on his hips. His hips are the center of gravity. I'm going to pull on his hips in this direction. I'm going to roll underneath him. I'm going to create a roll in this direction here like this. And I'm going to get on top of him. Watch here. This is a very easy roll to do. If my opponent were to sprawl to stop the roll, I would just get to my knees and get on top of him. And that would be a bad position for him as well. Once you, once you roll him over, that Kimura is staring you in the face. Okay, so here we go. Here's another uh, variation I added. Sometimes... Somebody does a loose pass, and and there's so much space between me and my partner that I don't even need the frame or the prayer position. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to post on the inside, 
and then I'm going to hip escape, right? He didn't get close enough to me to establish a uh, connected side control. So what I was just trying to illustrate in this little shot here was always uh, which, which variation you're going to use depends on the distance. If the guy's very far, you don't need the frame. You don't need pair position. Just extend your arms, push him away from you. you there's plenty of breathing room. Bring those legs in and go right into the, the, the same uh, combination. Now, if he's a little bit tighter to you, go to the frame. So you see that frame? I caught him earlier. The, the, I saw the guard pass coming and I caught him early. I got to my frame position, palms on top of the head, forearms, creating that triangle. There's a huge buffer between my chest and his. Again, another easy escape. So if he does get really close to me and I caught him late, I caught the, the pass late, where am I gonna end up? I'm gonna end up in prayer position. So here's me showing frame escape again. Throw your legs in. If he pulls the arm out, here comes the triangle. This is a beautiful combination, guys. I mean, if you master this, getting caught on the bottom is going to be a rare, a rarity for you. I grab the hip, I grab the ankle, I roll him over, and now there's an easy sub. So the guy tried to pass your guard, he ends up getting subbed. This is a beautiful, uh, a beautiful uh, combination of moves here. Now, here what I was showing here is I believe the north-south escape. Yes, a lot of people ask me that. When you go to frame escape and people go to north-south, what do you do? Well, watch what I'm going to do. My frame escape is not going to change. My frame escape is really doing a good job of protecting me from the north-south choke, much better than the the prayer escape, the prayer position escape. So watch here. He's going north-south. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to jam my frame right in his armpit here. See how my frame went right, right into his armpit? And again, I have such a huge buffer space. Watch this buffer space. So what do you think I'm going to do here? Of course, I'm going to bring my knees back into play, and I'm going to invert the guard and bring my knees back into play. But one very important concept that you guys might not know is I don't want to push my opponent away. Okay, Now, I will be pushing in this direction, but what I'm concentrated on is moving my hips back and away from my partner. A lot of people push in the armpit. You know, I push in the armpit as well, but they're expecting to move their partner back. I'm not expecting to move him back. I'm assuming he's too big, too strong for me to move him back. What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to push him in this direction and slide my body away. Okay, so it's really important. Notice that, okay, you never push your opponent away. Rather, you slide your own body away. When I slide my own body away, I'm going to invert the guard, and I'm going to replace my, for my frame with my knees. So I'm going to bring my knees or my feet and I'm going to play whatever guard I want. I can go into arm drag, guillotine, inverted guard, inverted triangle, butterfly guard. I mean, whatever you feel, you can flow into. So here I go. I feel I pushed him away. I'm going to bring my legs back into play. There was plenty of room here. My partner wasn't giving me much pressure, so I, I just kind of improvised. Basically, what you want to do is you want to use your frame to push yourself away and then bring those legs back into play. You can invert the guard. Here, I'm not inverting the guard. I'm just going right back into butterfly guard here. I probably pull an arm drag. And again, just be ready to improvise read and react, see what your opponent's reactions are, attack him appropriately. And that brings us to the end of another episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please make sure to like, share, and comment. And I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.